Okay, I think we are great to go. So welcome everybody, g'day, and welcome to A Good Life Show, where every week we interview extraordinary people and share their life lessons and wisdom and how these life transforming moments have inspired them to create careers, businesses, projects uh, that serve humanity and help us all live a good life. I'm your host, Justin Phillips. I'm a life okay. hacker, wellness, we great. wellness coach and global leader in sailor health technologies. And there is nothing I like better than to empower people to live a good life. Today, our very special guest is the amazing Chris Henderson. Uh, again, uh, because last week's uh, topic of could blue light uh, be killing your sleep uh, was so comprehensive. There was so much information that we needed to do it twice. <laughs> There's a part A and a part B, part one, part two. And today we're going into much more of a deep dive into circadian rhythms, vitamin D deficiency and solutions for healthier lighting. And Christopher Henderson is an, an expert in these areas. He's a functional diagnostic nutritionist. Uh, last week he shared his uh, more his humanitarian story of challenges from a very early age in life as an early adult with uh, two very serious autoimmune diseases and then forced to learn um, through his health about all these amazing technologies. So um, if you want to learn a bit more about Chris's background, by all means, please watch last week's episode. Um, and then, yeah, but this week we are going to get jump into much more of the technical data. So thank you very much for joining me on the call today, Chris. Thanks, mate. Really appreciate it. And uh, given the platform to extrapolate this interesting information. Yep. Yep. Love it. Thank you so much for sharing it. Okay, so light and health in our modern world. Do you want me to share the slides to go straight into it? Yeah, let's do it. And yeah, you have to be the moderator and click through the slides like last week because I have a problem with my Mac. Yeah, yeah, okay. No worries. I've been having a few IT challenges myself. A lot of updates last night. There we go. Can you see that well enough? Yeah, I can see that one. Okay, brilliant. So, um, number two. Cool. Vitamin D deficiency. Yeah, this is the this is the main. Well, it's a big part of what we're going to talk about. Um, you still there, Chris? I'm wondering if I've lost you or I've lost everyone. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, Chris is coming back. Yeah, I'm still here. Hey, David's there. Fantastic. Uh, Chris, you with us? Perhaps not. And this is the challenge. <laughs> we live in an online world now. Uh, and sometimes if we have an IT issue like an internet dropout, uh, online events just don't work the same as a live event. But he's back. Hey, Better than that, ever. I don't know if that was me or you. It doesn't matter. I, I think it was you, but okay. all good. You're here again. I've re rebooted. Cool. So vitamin D is a real issue, even in Australia. You wouldn't think so, but definitely is. Um, I mentioned last week in... Places like Europe and Sweden, Scandinavia, the government pays for two vitamin D tests a year for the entire population. Mm -hmm. So they're, obviously it's a big public health issue for them because of obviously their climate. And in the winter, they're plunged in darkness basically. But this is a study that Curtin University did and they measured rates of deficiency during winter across Australia. And up to almost 50% of Southern states are deficient, um, fairly le uh, decent level of deficiency in Western Australia. And not so much in Queensland, but like I said last week, uh, the the ranges they're using to test what's deficient and not deficient are, are quite poor as far as you know optimal is concerned. So, mm -hmm. I'd be I'd be concerned about Queensland as well. But this is definitely something that we have to be concerned about because as we'll go through the slides, vitamin D is plays a massive role in, in health, and and this is like really low hanging fruit. So, next, yeah. A lot of people wouldn't expect that from a, a, a sun-loving country like Australia. Well, no, and I mean, it doesn't mean that people don't get out in the sun, but I guess the controversial thing is we, we tend to use a lot of sunscreens and sunglasses and we're basically blocking the actual uh, UV light from, from uh, you know, building our melanin in our skin. But um, these are more optimum levels. This is uh, from Dr. McCullough. He's, he's done a bunch of, obviously working as a doctor and online presence, and they've, they've calculated these levels. And in Australia, we measure in, I think it's nanomoles a litre. Um, it's a different measurement in America, but this is the conversion. So they say, in terms of their research, is deficiency starts at less than 125. 
125 is quite, I've not seen many people at 125 when I've tested, I probably said 90 maximum. Um, and you start to get optimum 125, 175. And then you look, if you're looking to treat specific conditions, you, you have to push it way higher. So this is the 25 hydroxy D. So this is, um, I think this is the storage level they're talking about. This is the storage level and the active level. And then you've got excess up and beyond that. But uh, I'm with my condition, autoimmune conditions and the, the clients I see, and you might see some autoimmune condition clients, uh, Justin, Mm-hmm. they get nowhere near like we're below 40 nanomoles a liter like it's a real issue for people struggling with those types of conditions so mm. uh, if you go next um this really bears it out so this is associated with levels below 100 nanomoles mm. and i've never seen anyone at above 90 yeah there's a few there <laughs> well, there's a few, <laughs> a few there mental illness alzheimer's parkinson's Electro hypersensitivity. You were talking with Cyril's Cyril's work. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, we did an interview with Cyril Burke and EMFs. So go back and watch that if you want to learn about EMFs. Um, but look, that's looking to me like they're all the major, the main challenges, health challenges that people present to me. That's pretty. That's the vast majority of them, right? For sure. So this is what I was saying last week. If you have a good doctor that can test your active. Form. I think you said your doctor was good. He could do that for you. Um, not many do. They, you can't really present there and go, hey, I just want my vitamin D tested. They're pretty reticent to do that in the current medical system because, you know, they get these quieters, they, they tra- track levels. I think you, if you can get it done, you've got to pay out of pocket now. They don't they don't bulk bill it. Yep. So it's, it's just mind-blowing, right? Like Sweden does this one thing and we're like <laughs> showing farther and farther away from testing mm. something that's so significant in terms of managing chronic illness or, or looking at levels as a marker of determining uh, the possibilities of being a, being a problem. So that, that's why I mentioned what we do. I work with clinical nutritionists and we, we've worked a few novel ways out of actually getting getting people tested without having to go through the main system. Yep, yep, and next, fantastic. And next. So obviously the C word's a big, big issue. Um, this is a large scale study on optimum vitamin D levels can slash your risk of the C, big C by as much as 60%. And optimizing that can prevent at least 16 different types of the C, including all these types of conditions. So mm. pretty amazing, um, yeah. one marker. And as I said, like we have to look at it in the context it isn't a vitamin, it's a hormone. It's a very powerful modulating hormone that controls up to 3000 genes. And I think there's like 300 uh, genes in the human breast tissue that uh, controls as well so yeah yeah very important um more about sort of sunlight like i said last week got to get as much uh natural light as you possibly can because getting that sunlight on your skin getting your vitamin d levels up actually helps metabolize hormones right so we have all these hormone problems you know we're taking creams and, and looking at diet and things like that but it's, it's mainly the metabolization the breakdown and the utilization of the hormone and light helps us to do that so you get a reduction in those estrogen dependent cancers, the breast and the prostate. And they have you know, it's pretty epidemic. That sort of. Stuff. That's really helpful for me as a wellness coach. Cause I, I, um, I actually wasn't aware about that of the, how the sunlight natural light breaks down the hormones, because I see a lot of, um, ladies who have hormonal issues impacting their liver because their liver is trying to, re- you know, break down and recycle their hormones. Their liver gets overtaxed. Um, and then, all sorts of other symptoms, you know, migraines and all sorts of things. So more natural light is another, another tool in my toolbox to help, uh, help people like that. That's amazing. So simple, so natural, fancy that it's so natural. <laughs> oh, you're there, Chris. We lost you again. Oh dear. Hopefully, hopefully we're not going to have Chris dropping it in and out, but it looks like we are. He's back again. Sorry, mate. There must be the wind outside. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, the next so slide. You're, you're talking about yeah the hormones. So this is really interesting. You're talking about vitamin D and uh, p- protecting the in- intestinal lining in the gut, right? So we're very big on gut health. Uh, mm-hmm. Vitamin D protects that. Uh, it has a mechanism to protect that that uh, lining behind the the brush border, right? To keep out all the nasties out of the bloodstream. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, the light that we're getting 
somehow signals to the microbiome who also release light back into the system, which is this crazy uh, physoelectric effect. And like I said do, last do, week, do you want to do you want to talk a little bit more about that, just so people are really clear? Like break that down into so, super simple terms because this okay. is awesome. So, so essentially, Einstein's work where he was talking about how photons and atom and light comes to um, affect biological systems. We're taking that those photons and we're creating energy, right? Like the cells are creating energy, the bacteria in the body are creating energy. Yeah. And, 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 the, and back to simple terms, Chris, a photon, for those that don't know, right. a photon is the smallest particle of light. That's right. And I mentioned last week, they've actually got cameras that measure these, these uh, particles and they can see them emitting from us and emitting from what was the one that the, the animal had died and it took 48 hours to emit all the light out of its, of its system. Right. So, so we are we, beings of light. Yeah. Beings of light and it's low UV light. So it is in the UV range. So, you know, it begs the question we're running away from this, this source that we're actually emitting. It's part of us. Let's like get a bit of a balance here and. Yep. Oh, he's dropped again. Very interesting. What Chris is saying there, how, you know the the mainstream kind of message is about be careful of sunlight and uv light because it's got these dangers what chris is is presenting scientific inf information that shows that we actually manufacture and emit these same these these uh some of the same bands of uv light and how important that is i've often had a similar argument um uh or, or opinion from from my research into saturated fats and there's you know some people say oh saturated fats terrible you know causes heart disease all this sort of stuff but then if we don't have any uh saturated fats in our diet our body actually makes saturated fats so i think it's really important to have a balanced opinion about this and do your own research uh but very interesting to hear that we are actually emitting light uh as, as a part of uh, our natural being chris is back I'm back. I don't know what's going on. Thank you for Must changing location. We'll, we'll try oh, it again. No, called out. Um, yeah, so in terms of like Crohn's disease and, and keeping that gut lining healthy, uh, the, the circadian rhythm controls um, the turnover, turnover of the cells in the gut line and keeping them healthy. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep a good night, light, dark cycle and, and, and get in tune to that to have that proper cell turnover in the gut, which is really crucial. Like we say, you're coaching people and who have gut issues. That's mm -hmm. really important, right? Because you're putting mm -hmm. in the microbiome, giving, giving the gut support and all this support when mm -hmm. you need to get the, the repair cycles optimized right in there in the system as well. Yep. Yep. And so much dependent on light. I see there that the vitamin D you've got vitamin D activates the T regulator cells. Uh, I've often said to people about your T1 and T2 and T3 cells in your immune system that if it's out of balance uh, one way, it'll be a person will often experience recurrent infections and cancer where the immune system is not working correctly. And then the other way is sensitivity, allergy and autoimmune disease where the, where the immune system is overworking in an inappropriate way. And all of that balance rests on the T3, which is in the gut. So back to this uh, very um, scientifically validated, but also traditionally validated, uh, such as traditional Chinese medicine, saying that the bowel is the seat of health. The gut is the key to to health. Yeah, and then it comes back into the qi cycle. So it's a, it's a key, but you got to have the cycle right. Yeah, yeah, great. So this is an interesting study. Sorry if you it's, it's a bit condensed <laughs> with the information there. So. This study was really interesting. They did. They used UV lamps, so UV light lamps on the stomach um, of, I think, 12 participants, and they found that their microbiome diversity increased as opposed to the control, which was using supplements only. So they wow. were vitamin D supplements and then using a therapy with light and UV, and they got a richness and a, and a, a more diverse microbiome, um, and they weren't taking supplements. So that's a bit of a novel um, study on yeah using you know, different frequencies a lot in this particular case using UV. And I think, look, it was maybe 10 minutes at a time. If, if people are using UV lamps, though, you're not sitting under a UV lamp for like two hours. It's like 10 minutes on the, on the skin and then you're finished. Yeah. So this, but... this, this speaks to what we we're saying. The UV light is, is somehow communicating or, or, or helping enrich that microbiome and 
and biology in the gut. And protective against inflammatory disease, diseases like MS and RBD? Sorry, yeah, I'm not looking at my own slides. I'm looking at you. <laughs> uh, obviously, MS, yeah, that's MS is... They, they, they really track across the equator, don't they? And they say the further north you go over the equator, the more incidence there is of MS. But um, I guess that's not so linear these days, especially in this electromagnetic world we're living in, where, you know, in the, we're in the southern hemisphere, close to the equator, but we've still got high incidences of these um, conditions because I guess people just aren't, yeah, aren't getting enough skin in the game and getting vitamin D optimized, you know? <laughs> I love it. Not enough skin in the game. And sun yeah, indeed shine out of your backside. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is autoimmune. So autoimmune, obviously, it's right up my alley. I mentioned Dr. Uh, Professor Trevor Marshall last week, and he found, like I said, that uh, that Wi-Fi mobile phone frequency affects that VDR receptor on the cell that takes vitamin D in. So obviously, you don't want to be bathing in a lot of those frequencies, especially at night, like Cyril said. And... Um, Basically, it means that we need more circulating vitamin D because the, the receptor isn't working as well. So you've got to be really working to up your vitamin D, um, especially you know, with an autoimmune condition. So just the, the, the bottom line is autoimmune, you've got to look at the vitamin D mm. and, your, and your EMF. Um, this is fairly, con well, not controversial, it's, it's in studies, it's on the Cancer Council's own website. They're basically saying that you know, indoor workers have a higher occurrence uh, of melanoma than outdoor workers. Um, it's pretty easy to understand because your vitamin D levels are low, your melatonin levels are low, and that's, you know, you're going to be more sensitive to light and you're not going to have a protective uh, melanin uh, natural sunscreen. You know, you develop naturally with light and you become more susceptible and more um, uh, able to be damaged by UV light. So mm -hmm. that's my hypothesis. I think that's fairly correct. This is all from Sun and Cancer websites. So it's, I'm, I'm not picking this out of anywhere. Mm. This is on the, on the websites. Um, there's actually tan through bathing technology in swimsuits now. Um, they have this in the UK. There's a, there's a brand called Kaniki. I don't think those slides are cool tan. Doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so people can get their parts like like i said in those slides the breast tissue the the the, the uh, reproductive organs exposed to uv and different oh he's dropped out for a second again um well you know hopefully if i got swimwear like that i'd look as hot as that as the uh, advertising does but uh <laughs> obviously there's some real benefits in when you are spending time in the sun uh that you get a balanced amount of the sun um, and that's how clothing brands are being developed that allow the UV to go through so that you get that benefit of natural uh, UV tanning. That's, um, that, that's pretty exceptional. I, I don't think, you know, only 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that many people would be actually talking about having swimwear that gives you a tan. That's just phenomenal. Sorry, mate. It, it, somehow it's unstable, so I might be dropping in and out, but let's see how well we can go. Yeah. yeah. Nick. Um, so melanoma, like we were talking about, Dr. Leland Stillman, he's come out with this uh, analysis that melanoma is consistently associated with low melatonin levels. That we were talking about last uh, last week, melatonin is a hormone that Cyril mentioned you make it in with, with a particular type of light in the daytime. And then it will re release at night as long as you're not exposed to a lot of this artificial blue light that tricks your brain and nervous system into thinking that it's midday sun. So you, you, you've got to really protect the melatonin. So um, modern in our modern world, we're really living in a chronic melatonin depriva deprivation state. And that's having a you know, massive impact. So if we go next. There's your happy hormones. Happy oh. hormones. So this oh, is... Okay. Dr. Jack Cruz, uh, we're diurnal animals. So diurnal is daytime. That's when we're supposed to be out and about in this light, not at nighttime. We're not, a, we're not nocturnal. We're not like cats and outdoor animals that, that wake up at night and go out in the moonlight. We're diurnal. We do our activity in, in daylight light and evening exposure to lighting, artificial phone, tablet screens, televisions, et cetera, et cetera, actually breaks the bond between vitamin A and vitamin D via the eye and the skin. So that's a really important point. Those two things are linked. And then in, in mammals, the link is very weak and easily broken. 
and they found that blue, artificial blue light is so energy dense that it breaks that link. So you get a reduction in vitamin A, reduction in vitamin D, and this is what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. building it. You've got to protect yourself, and yeah. this is one. Of, this is the reason. So every single light, screen, tablet, app, Kindle is all emitting light in this 400 to 500 or 480 nanometer. Um, part of this blue spectrum that is nowhere compatible to nature. Definitely don't want to be under that type of light at night. You want to be mitigating your exposure to this at night because all the studies are showing visualized strain macular degeneration and, and then that melatonin dis disruption and sleep disruption at between 459 and uh, 484, which is just all your blue shirt, blue stuff. I was about to sh swear there, your blue, your blue light and your, your blue exposures to artificial light. Um, this is another problem with melatonin deficiency. I said last week the brain will run those detox programs and reduce, will reduce in size and do a lymphatic flush through the brain. Um, we're just having epidemic levels of you know, neurological issues like dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's now. And it's really interesting that's happening at an earlier and earlier age, younger and younger. And if I think about it, artificial light's been around for a while, but it's, it's really we're in the first generation of LED lighting. It's been the first 20 years, probably from the early 2000s, where everyone's fitted this all out in their homes. We're, we're super hooked into all this stuff 24-7, and we're getting uh, an earlier and earlier onset of this, this degeneration. And I really, it's, it's just melatonin deficiency, uh, you know, redox deficiency, cellular turnover issues, um, EMF issues at night and sleeping. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's crazy. So melatonin is very, uh, very significant in this, this uh, area. I um I've noticed that my Wi-Fi, I just turn my Wi-Fi on on my computer just to see which networks are in the area. And I, there's been more lately. There's been more and more. There used to be one, and now I've got about five that are impacting my house. Yeah. And uh, one of the great things that Cyril made me aware of is being able to log on to the router and change the the power of that yeah. as well. So to reduce the power, so you're not like blasting your Wi-Fi into everyone else's house. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, so, yeah, but uh, the combination like, of light and EMF is, is terrible. And like you mentioned, like EMF, your body interprets that it's light. It's on the frequency on the spectrum. It's just a light bombarding the nervous system and the brain, and you just can't recover. You can't sleep and recover. So this is um, how we're doing as an antidote, right, to this new neurodegeneration is photobiomodulation, which is using certain frequencies of light, frequencies of light namely in the red and near-infrared spectrum for healing. There's over 4,000 published medical studies to show that effect. And there were studies done uh, last year in two Australian universities, Adelaide and Sydney, to do with these light therapy helmets on Parkinson's. And there were significantly improved outcomes. And they're going to commercialise that helmet, I think, pretty soon. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, with uh, my father-in-law having a heart attack a month ago, uh, you know, we, we purchased one of the, the far infrared light panels and red and, and near far infrared. Uh, light panels from uh, from Block Blue Light, and um, yeah, I got to play with it yesterday for the first time. Uh -huh. And it's like, yeah, it's pretty intense. But uh, you know, the Australian study is showing a, a, a decrease of up to sixty eight percent scarring post uh, uh, a heart attack, myocardial infarction, yep. by being exposed to this red light. It's just phenomenal. Like, I can't. I'm shocked at that. I can't wait for that to become mainstream. But you know, obviously, most of the time, these things take twenty years to to be implemented into medicine, even though it's been proven in hospitals and in universities in Australia. Well, like, like I said, uh, the, the Parkinson's helmets were due to the, the politician who was getting symptoms that he couldn't recover from with medication. And then his doctor was pushing into the University of Sydney to actually get him in a trial. And they said, no, there's no human tr tr trials for like a decade. So they went and built the helmet at a men's shed he used that, got better, and then took that back to the uni. And that's then they said, so yeah. cool. And they said, "Yeah, look, we'll do the trials." And that's what was that. That's what uh, kicked the trials off last oh, year. That's awesome. Citizen science, right? God. Necessity is the mother of all invention, right? Hundred um, percent. Interesting. This is all Australian studies as well. This is from the ABC publishing this stuff. So, Dr. Kane um, with with uh, 
people with depression using antidepressants, SSRIs. So they found that it, those who didn't keep that good circadian rhythm and too much blue light at night, not enough natural light, they wouldn't metabolize the drug properly and they'd be very unstable. Whereas those who start to keep um, proper circadian rhythms actually stabilized, had better um, outcomes on the medication and you know, went along that way. So basically he's re reestablishing the fact that we're talking about, we have clocks in our brain, in our, in our genes, in our organs, you know, that have this biological function of keeping light and dark and cellular turnover and metabolism. And this is all Australian. Yep, yep, fancy that. <laughs> Amazing. This is out of Israel, it's pretty shocking. This is like 2008, I think. They did um, studies on outdoor street lighting and uh, the, the cool white LED lighting and found that significantly reduced uh, melatonin excretion at night um, and they also had secondary studies showing there was implications in prostate cancer and development of nearsightedness in children eye strain headaches all the all the normal things that we know now but that was outdoor lighting and they found that the orange hue was a lot better so remember those older orange lights you know that you put yeah the street? i love better. them because they kind of feel to, they, to me they feel like a campfire yeah. They feel, they, even though it doesn't actually change temperature, but it does make you feel warmer. It's just the color of the light. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the blue, the cold blue white light. It just, yeah, to me, it's just really uncomfortable. It's just not pleasant. And it, and it does, to me, it does hurt. Like my eyes are sensitive to it. Yeah. And then you'd be sensitive to the flicker as well. So yeah, the flicker would be mm -hmm. part of the power grid. It's flickering millions yeah. of times as well but this I was, suppose this is something for us to really talk to our councils about like hey because well, they just did a heap of lighting on um bribey foreshore and bribey uh bridge and it's like ah it's all horrible it's not the nice lighting there was a link there was a link that i had up in last year's uh last week's slides it's the australian dark skies alliance a group of scientists working with councils to protect the environment right artificial light so yeah. maybe that's something we can do i can get you that link and you can shoot it off to your local councillor or something because the the sunshine coast council are definitely looking to protect areas from, because surely uh, this is not just impacting us it's impacting all wildlife right yeah, of course wildlife yeah you know, these guys are astronomers they're, they're like uh you know they want to see the night sky right because it's a uh, light pollution to them so nothing yeah so this was secondary out of those Israeli studies and they, uh, the doctors in there said that, how do we actually get these standards changed in lighting? And some of the recommendations were to have um, uh, certain recommend, health recommendations on the back of lighting saying, well, the spectral analysis is this and this has been proven to reduce melatonin, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think the industry has really taken it up. Obviously it's, it's a recommendation. Whenever there's recommendations, not really, they don't really worry about recommendations. They worry about legislation, right? So um, we haven't really seen much of a movement. That's why I work with private companies who are developing better lighting. I'm not looking for the likes of Philips and other massive organisations to do anything in that area just yet. But um, this was definitely recommended to them. Yeah, that's that's very exciting. This is actually uh, so. This is coming from the industry. So it's LED professional. Uh, putting together uh, recommendations again that lighting uh, the the blue the blue light the blue LED lighting be enhanced with um, near infrared. So exactly what your father-in-law is doing with that light panel, and that will balance the spectrum out. So like you mentioned yesterday, Nicole asked, "How do we you know get better indoor you know environments?" And we said, "Open the windows." Well, opening in the windows actually balances out that spectrum right even if you've got bad lighting so they're actually suggesting for the health benefit you put the the, the near infrared in the light to actually uh, improve that spectrum the only issue with that's very expensive to put near infrared into light fittings very okay. expensive so we're trying to come up with something that's a bit of a compromise at the moment yeah so this is like the bill and end all basically you know they, they built these leds to save us power and save the world from, you know, climate change. They're energy efficient, they're eco and green, but they're basically killing us. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. No, there's the human element, there's usually when engineering, there's never really a human element of health in there. It's just like an outcome element, right? And, and they've yeah. done that. I mean, you've got these low wattage LEDs and they save you a ton of money, but 
I mean, yeah, if we're all, <laughs> if a cellular turnover is getting affected, melatonin's low, and we're, 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 we're adding a, a bunch of costs to the, the mainstream medical system, it's like counterintuitive, right? So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, you mightn't be able to read, it doesn't really matter all that technical stuff, but I work with Block Blue Light in New Zealand, and Daniel's developed um, lighting that has pulled all the blue light on it, has a nice amber hue. There's also red lights there and he's uh, reverse engineered the flicker out of it so it doesn't flicker and affect the, the brain metabolism. And also it doesn't add in any of that dirty power onto your system like Cyril mentioned. It's nice and smooth on the sine wave. So uh, really well engineered, really well thought and, and, and done. And I've put my name to these and endorsed these and and try and get them out of as many health practitioners as I can uh, to understand there's, there's better products out there. Yeah. You've talked a couple of times on this, the fact that um, the other big problem with this blue LED or, you know, blue light, cool light LEDs is this flicker on the eye and the strain that that causes to our eye strain. And that flicker has the impact of, of um, increasing the, the irregularity of our electrical currents in our walls. And that, in, that produces what we call dirty electricity, uh, which has further damaging effects upon us. Do you want to just explore that a little bit more? Like, you know, so everything, how that, yeah, how that sure. so, so everything in that, that's, you know, the AC power system is alternating, you know, millions of times and it's not stable. So that's why it's flickering. And then you're also getting uh, the, the power that's polluting the power the sine wave of the power and all those things, both from a neurological point of view and nervous system point of view are actually being measured as toxins, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like you're sitting in a toxified, you know, you can't see it. You can't smell it. Mm. Um, some of us could be lucky to feel it or unlucky <laughs> yeah. to feel it. Um, but slowly just de degrading your nervous system and your neurological, maybe it's slowly for some people, but over time, for example, like, how many people wear prescription glasses now? Like everyone's, everyone's wearing, wearing glasses. Like oh, it's almost like a fashion statement. Ah, oh, I got these glasses. Well, you just, you've knocked your eyesight out because you've destroyed it with blue light and all these other electromagnetic fields that you can't see. Mm. It's not a, it shouldn't be a badge of honor. But, you know, it should be, Hey, how do we, what's happening and how do we reverse it? Right. We don't want to become blue light toxic. Mm. Um, and do you, yeah, do you, I'm not sure. Did you share your light story, your eyesight story last week? Do you want to just go over that? Because I think that's amazing. And since I've spoken to you about your eyesight recovery through using um, light near dawn, I've heard of a heap of other people that have done that. Yeah. So I had prescription glasses um, very early on, probably 27, 28 years old, because first in it and it's the first time i was working in an office that was full of wi-fi and blue light and i was on a computer for eight hours a day within about a year six months a year my eyesight was just destroyed i needed prescription glasses and i had these glasses for 10 years and i, I don't think i had to have the prescription changed um mm -hmm. but i thought you know i came across dr jack cruz's work with light and that was my first uh, exposure to a prescription of using light and he said get out in the sun the sunrise because there's no uv light you can look into that you can't look into the sun but there's a lot of red in near infrared like exactly what your father-in-law is doing with that panel mm. massive amounts of this really long wave healing frequency it goes, permeates right through your cells and regenerates the uh the system and regenerates the mitochondria and i did that for about six weeks along with using blocking glasses at night so i didn't get the artificial light and then within probably about two months i could see really well and could read i couldn't read books i couldn't read like i'm like this i'm like couldn't read the books mm. so i just dumped all the kindles and all that rubbish and and went back to hard copies and that's what i do at night but um yeah it's super powerful i mean I, I don't i don't know if everyone will get that same quickness and regeneration but i mean you've got to be consistent and consistency always wins the day right so mm. just like mm. you know vitamin d supplementation i take my cod liver oil every day because i know more what i mean disease i've got to keep it up right so mm. you've mm. got to be motivated mm. some health challenge is very motivating <laughs> yeah yes exactly it's the carrot and the stick right and uh, my own 
health uh, challenge of 20 years caused me to become an expert in what I do uh, because it helped me to be healthy. But it's a pleasure to help others as well and give that back for those that are less fortunate, just don't know. Um, you know, we're all teaching each other all the time. That's the whole part of the show is to, you know, to, we rise by lifting others up. And uh, I just think your story around your eyesight is just absolutely amazing, Chris. And I, I really want that that story to get out so that more people are just willing to try, get up early, have a look at, you know, get that morning sun. Don't look directly at the sun, but look near the sun. And then to eliminate the blue light um, so that yeah, at night using blue blocker glasses, not using screens, uh, going back to books, hard copy books and so forth, reading them and, uh, and to have such a significant result of prescription glasses for so long to excellent eyesight within a couple of months. I, I, just, I just think that your, you know, your story, Chris, is just absolutely phenomenal. So thank you so much for sharing that again. That's great. I'll share the screen again so you can go on to, uh, did you have any more comments about this slide? No, nope, you're there. I can't hear you, your, um, your audio has dropped out. Apologize, Chris. Uh, we did have a, we were trying to get a video for you, but um, the video was unable to, to be um, put into this show, uh, into this slide deck, but uh, this was just a demonstration video of Chris um, showing someone about the warm light compared to uh, the cool light. Yeah, still still don't have any audio for you, Chris. I'm sorry, I've got no mic. There you go, there it is. So let me, let me re-plug this in. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Cool. All right. So this video, that that little video, was a was a demo of the the um, lighting that we do in the downlight, which is more of an amber orange uh, tone. So when you mention warm warm light, people get confused. They think oh, I've got the warm white LEDs. The problem with the warm white LEDs is that's mainly green light, mm -hmm. and that still suppresses melatonin at night. So. This, these amber lights have a very small amount of green and mostly amber, orange, and red. And that's a, a really nice fire lit type of uh, ambience. It helps you calm down. I've got these in the sitting room and just, uh, you can't, even if you watch a bit of telly, blue blockers on this and you, you're falling asleep within about an hour. Mm. I was just looking, I've got one of your bulbs around here somewhere and I'm about to order a 10 pack uh, and put them all through the house. <laughs> so. oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that, yeah that um, another another thing I mentioned is, like I said, the vitamin A, vitamin D cycle in your eyes and the skin is affected by this blue light. So, um, choosing uh, a good set of blue blocking glasses is is important, especially if you were on computers during the day. You'd you'd choose like a clear filtering uh, lens, and at night you'd use a an orange or a red tinted uh, to to block 100% of the uh, certain blue light. Um, there's a caveat with a lot of these clear lenses from other companies and also from the optometrists where the, they claim uh, it reduces the, 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 that blue light spike from all these devices by certain amounts and we've tested them and they don't. And yet we've actually developed it. This is a pigmented lens that absorbs 50% of that targeted blue light range that uh, is the most damaging. So since I've used, I use mine, I have no, no problem with eye strain, headaches at all on screens, nothing. Um, wow. So that, that redu re reducing that massive spike down, that most damaging spike right down is, is so, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing the effect it's had. And um, I've got my orange ones in there, but as you can see, they're the same as these ones. And I usually put them on around about seven o'clock at night and I have them on for a couple of hours and then I'm just, you know, falling asleep. Yeah. It, just, it just really kicks in. So I've had clients who've... Oh, well, that, we've lost him again. Uh, so our apologies. Obviously, Chris has had a lot of troubles with his internet connection today. Uh, but I, I can certainly uh, reiterate what Chris is talking about. Um, I was given uh, some pairs, and I, I don't think that these are nearly the sort of quality uh, of what uh, Block Blue Light uh, is selling. And um, we'll, we'll make sure those links uh, below the show notes uh, so that you can go to, um, to Block Blue Light, which we know is a very reputable brand uh, and is much more effective at, uh, at blocking that light. 
So as uh, you may remember last week, uh, we did talk about a few things, a few strategies for you to uh, start to implement this information. We really want you to go away uh, from a good life show each week with some real solutions. So uh, Chris, if you wanted to walk us through uh, some of your suggested action steps for people to learn from. Let's hope I can stick around for five minutes without this dropping out. I've never <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know. So yeah, you want to increase your natural light. Um, try to, to get at least you know, 10 to 30 minutes. You know, do some sunrises, do some noon sun, especially in winter. The, the actual um, time range where you have UVs between like 10 and 2 in winter. So you've got to get some time outside during that time. And then afternoon, you get a lot of red and, and nice near infrared light as well. So um, testing and optimizing that vitamin D. So if anyone needs to do that, we do that. Um, using the app to actually optimize, you know, your timing for that, like we mentioned last week. Um, I don't, a lot of people take vitamin D supplements like D2, D3, which is vitamin D on its own. Definitely don't recommend that because, you know, in a whole food matrix, you need, that's why I take cod liver oil because it's got, got vitamin A, it's got other uh, fat soluble vitamins in it. You need uh, good minerals to help um, uh, metabolize and activate vitamin D. So uh, you need vitamins K, minerals, magnesium, boron, et cetera. Um, one caveat is that if you're taking D on its own, it's, it can be dangerous because you need calcium, D, magnesium, K to actually um, move calcium to the right parts of the body and like the bones. Mm -hmm. Taking D by itself, it can be an issue and the calcium starts to shunt into like the heart. <laughs> yeah, um, cardiovascular so, system and yeah. joints and places you don't want calcium. Exactly. So I, I look, I've used, I'm a guinea pig, so I've used like, transdermal patches with vitamin D, K, magnesium, calcium, which are really good. I've switched it um, using um, fermented cod liver oil. Uh, you've got to also eat, you know, fatty fish, you know, salmon, tuna, mackerel, um, mushrooms. They contain a lot of vitamin D and a lot of nutrients. So I'm more food-based like you. Try and get as much from the food and the natural light and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, melatonin, like we mentioned, is built um, by a certain frequency of sunlight but you also need the to actually have all the precursors built into your system right which is tryptophan eating a lot of tryptophan rich foods is good so like poultry pork dairy nuts and seeds this is definitely not a vegan um thing you know what i mean Yet, like if you look at like western like prices books and indigenous they always had a lot of fatty type of meats and fish and has a lot of dha in it which dha a lot of us are deficient in that i know we have a good supplement um DHA forms, you know, the, the, the membranes of your cells and the, the, the sheaths and the membranes that protect your nervous system. Like, mm. can't be going without this. So that's, that's really good in terms of nutritional-wise. Um, look at mitigating your blue light at night with, with your glasses and get some nice lighting. You know, cover your skin when you're artificial light, like I mentioned, if you can, because you've got those receptors on your skin that, you know, are activating all these gene clocks and sleep in darkness. And then, yeah, you can go to uh, www.buy-light.co and I've got a, a really good ebook there for people to, you know, sit down and get educated apart from really going quickly through slides. They can sit down and start digesting more of this information and then diagnostichealthsolutions.com.au if you're looking for any functional testing on vitamin D and uh, urinary hormone testing and things of that nature to see if actually, you know, you're making all the proper metabolites from what you're doing. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, I'll put all of those links and notes uh, at the bottom of the show in the show notes. Um, I'll post them in the Facebook live and also in the YouTube. Um, so want to say super grateful, Mac, Mac, you know, awesome effort. You've given so much value uh, and so much of your time, Chris, to educate us all. I'm super grateful for you being on the show. Um, you, you're just such a, a great leader in that you walk the talk. You know, you've been through the challenges in your life uh, and now you are committed and on that mission to help other people. Um, you really are a light in the world that's shining bright and, uh, and helping uh, people live a better life, a good life, which is the whole, whole purpose of this show. So by all means, uh, go and follow Chris, um, check out his, his social media uh, and his website and so forth. I want to thank... Um, uh, did you have any closing comments before we wrap the show up, Chris? No, just thanks to the platform. Public exposure is the number one, and I've been able to share these these videos that you've allowed us to do um, with naturopaths and 
you know, in America and get some exposure to this topic. And, you know, let's, yeah. let's start to move, shake and move around this subject a lot. Yeah, yeah. You're amazing. You're awesome. So obviously, you know, it, uh, Chris does see clients as well. So you can uh, do consultations. I think you had a, uh, like you were giving a, I don't know, 15 minute discovery call or something. Yeah, like we did 20 minutes on there. And, and that's it. Free 20 and minute call. And I'll send out a link. Um, I think you've got, a, I'll send you another link, Justin, that is directly linked to a discount code for the lighting stuff, which is a different link. Is that the healthy lights? That's um, the, the block blue light one, but I, it's, a, it's a one with the discount code built in so people don't okay. have to put it in. It okay. goes straight to the cart, yeah. Yeah, that would be awesome. Even better. Thank you so much, Chris, for your generosity. I want to thank everyone for joining on, on the, the Good Life Show. Thank you for helping us to create a healthier and happier and more prosperous world. Your message matters. All of us have got great lessons that we've learned in life. And if we, uh, we work together as a team, team stands for together. Everyone achieves more. Uh, we can certainly do a lot more than what we can do by ourselves. So thank you for fulfilling us, for helping us fulfill our mission. And uh, you can learn more about what I do, my wife and I, uh, what we do at www.theparentpreneur.com. Uh, the link will be down below. Please leave us your comments, your questions. Uh, show us your love. Show, show our speakers like Chris your love. Um, and, uh, and share your love by giving us likes and follow, subscribe. You know, press all the buttons down below. And uh, please share this message with those people that really need to hear it. Uh, like you've heard from Chris over the last couple of weeks, the vast majority of the population is just not aware of how we've actually now designing our homes to kill us. It's not real clever. We need to change that around quick smart uh, and, and help each other out. So make it a great week. Live a good life. Bye for now. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. See ya. Thanks, mate. Good on you. Thank you.